welcome back to my channel. I am going to be sharing part three for me album and this is going to be a longer video because I had so many ideas to share with you as far as opening pages and end pages which is something I love to do for the start and end of a month and then I had a lot of ideas for selfies as well. So I hope you guys have a project to do while you watch this or just a favorite drink, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. I put a lot of love into it and I'm excited to, again, share this next part with you. So this video will cover opening, ending pages, using grids or collages or even pocket pages to document an entire month in your album and family, different ideas for that. And finally, selfies and all kinds of ideas for documenting your selfies, including Snapchat, as ridiculous as that sounds, you should just try it because it's hilarious. All right, so let's go over to my desk and check out all the ideas. The first section we will talk about is 34 and 35, which are opening and ending pages for the month which is something I love to do for me. It's just automatic now to have an end page and a start page. So you can see here, this is 2022, the end page for August. I usually try to remember to put the month, but I guess I forgot, but here is September and I love getting this type of photo as well of me in the car and uh, just talking about how it's a shift in the seasons especially with school starting. So that is the start of that page. And then I can show you over here. This was the album that I challenged myself to finish. And I finished it, I think back in not too long ago, but I finished it recently. And so I just did a very short section for September to call it done. And this is the end page, the start of October. So you can see, I just, I usually try to grab a photo something that will represent what has happened in the month or like my favorite selfie, something like that, that I can open the page with. And I chose these photos because at the end of the month, I had already decided to decorate for Halloween. So I decided why not go with that since I know this page is going to be festive as well. And then let's check out November. So this was really, really fun to put together. You know that collage app I'm always telling you guys about? I used it here and I just absolutely love this. I need to do this type of layout again. I don't know for December daily or October daily, but it's just so fantastic. So what I did is I made a custom four by six collage with uh, six photos, gave myself like a nice border. I think it's usually like 25%. Then I pulled this into Photoshop Elements and I shrunk it down. I'm sure I could have done it on my phone, but I just shrink it down so that way I could print it out and fit it on here. So this is October and then this is November. And I had a die cut for this page. I lost it, you know, a die cut that said November. So I just need to add that on there. Finishing up November, I did a collage since again, I was just trying to finish up this album. So I did not have a lot of pages. So this is the end page for November. And again, I used a grid on that pick frame app and I select seven by nine. And that way I know it's gonna be big enough for outside the page protector. And this again, kind of touches on another topic on here which is using a grid to document an overview of everyday life and photos it's something that i come to time and time again using a grid some sort of collage or you know like like i said using the app there's nothing wrong with using an app if it helps speed the process along and it gets you to tell more stories now i i think this was part of the december daily creative team but I was asked along with all the other people in the team to make a page uh, that focused on tags. So this became my introduction page for December. Okay, let me get another example. Here's one that combines a lot of digital stamping. I used a Tracy Reed kit 
and a selfie I had taken and then made the background with all the digital stamps. Really fun and messy and I love it. And especially the warm air, messy hair, don't care. Then if we flip to the end of the month, I just did a fun page about me trying out a bikini for the first time in a very, very long time. And then this is my opening page for July, going very festive with the colors that I think fit for the month. And this is also an album where I didn't like finish some of the pages and I just let it go. Like there, this is supposed to be the end of July, but I never finished it and that's okay. I have a lot of stories in here as you can see, so that is good enough. And again, here's another grid. This one I used the Care Story Kit Digital and just made a grid of different things. You can see here, there's a book that I was reading, uh, being out in nature, a workout photo, another one, creative stuff, and then music. And then I just put a bullet point list right there. This is an opening page that I think I've already shared, but it opens up for February. In this particular album, I had done these uh, tabbed dividers. They, you can see they're getting yellow with age, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. So this is February. Over at the end, I just did a running list and then just filled it in with journaling cards. So see, there's no photos here. There's none of me, nothing. So you could just do your own thing as far as introduction pages for the month. An intro page can be really anything that you want it to be. Like in January, I actually did a two page spread to talk about you know what I was doing and combined it again with my one little word. This was a really fun like special page to make because I had just got this Everyday Explorer stamp set with like the different labels and like note pages. So I decided to pair it with the currently prompts and talk about what was going on in February and use this fantastic photo I got of me working out. So you can see I have currently inspired by, current project, current favorite, watching, exploring. So really love how that turned out. And again, using the colors that work for me for February. And then you move into March and I just broke it up into different sections using a mix of stamps and chipboard. And I think this was a digital card that I had printed out and it just turned out to be a fantastic spring page. Here's a really pretty one. Both of these are very pretty. I repeated the same technique with the labels, did a grid here. And again, I have a selfie, I have nature, I have every day, I have different you know, techniques that I tried. So lots of different things in one page, which is really fun. This one too, I went overboard with the stamps. It's just a simple photo of me working out in my house and I used, you know, Does It Spark Joy and this journaling card. Beginning of this album, I knew it was the start of the album, obviously, and so I decided not to do like a introduction page, but instead a title page, and I think that this is one of my favorites. I used my very big stash of Scrap and Happy Studio flares, and I picked out ones that I could use to make a kind of mind map about myself, and found an acrylic piece to add there. And I tried really to go with the neutral colors or you know, just adding in a little bit of color with the pinks. So I have stand out like a wildflower, motherhood, books, camera, everything will be okay, a cat, and create. So this was definitely a favorite page to make. And again, there's no photos there. I love this introduction page as well because to me, January is blues. I think of January as a month that has lots of blue colors. And I actually think this particular album is one of the most watched videos on my channel, which is interesting. This is 2018 and so I had this beautiful color cast designs piece. And so I added that to the about me added a details piece right here. I know it's on top of the journaling, but that really didn't matter to me. And then I made a list of everything that like I'm saying yes to as we enter 2018. 
Here is the end of February, just grabbing some stash pieces from LE Studio and then did a favorites list and two photos. Typically I go with photos that I may not have used in the pages for the month, so I put them there. Here is March and I tried, I trimmed down a card. I don't think I did such a great job with trimming it down, but I trimmed it down and made like strips with uh, other journaling cards. The end of March, I did something really fun with no photos and I even did a floating little pocket um, and added in a bunch of different pieces to talk about, you know, the end of March. And then for April, I just did a four by eight insert to talk about April since I was a, I think I was a guest designer for Coco Daisy or something like that. But that is a great intro page there. Okay, I have a few more examples and then we can move on to the next section in this video. But this again is so much fun to make intro pages. This one I went all out with my stamping and stamping the different roses and then just framing in my journaling. I even tried to make like a, I guess you could say like a faux border up here with the flowers, used a quote and a selfie. Here's an end page for April. This one was really pretty. I love how this came out. It's just so striking. I had a leftover die cut piece and I placed it here and there and then just changed the colors of this journaling card. I actually just noticed that I kind of goofed on <laughs> this uh, recoloring, but that's okay. And then I also have this May page with some Mandy Ford printables. So really fantastic end and um, outro type of pages. And if you go back to the beginning, here's another title page. Instead of doing, you know, the January page, I used my LE Studio stuff. I think I was on the design team at the time. I don't know. But I used a bunch of their products and also my favorite color green and paired it with this piece from them that says story. And so beautiful title page and I just, I love it. I know this is a super long section and you, you know, I did not plan on the opening and ending pages section to be so long of a video, but I just had so many ideas to share with you guys. So let's just keep going. This is my last one though. I wanted to share this fun one on the previous page. I documented these hilarious selfies with my bestie and <clears throat> that is actually the next section we're going to go over. Um, but I had the two by two and I had, I had to figure out a way to fill this. So I decided to do a September wrap up. So I picked, you know, music project, um, self care, exercising, a new magnet that I got driving. And then I added in several different quotes that I liked and then some journaling, lots of digital stamping as well. So that was definitely a unique, uh, ending page. I also did a fun title page uh, by saying, you know, October right there. And then you turn it and again, it's a shadow photo and Snapchat. And I think I meant to mention this, but Snapchat, I love going on there. And if like, I wanna just get a laugh, I will take a photo of myself, take a video of myself and just get a good laugh of myself with these funny filters and then I save them and I can use them and they're just an easy way to capture yourself even if you look a little ridiculous. So that is going to wrap up the opening and ending section. Again, I already showed you this but it's opening, ending and then I kind of went over a little bit of using a grid to document an overview of your everyday life but I will show some more examples and then we will also talk about friends and family as well. Let's get started on the next section which is using a grid to document an overview of everyday life. So think like project life spreads but basically I take all the photos that didn't make it into a story and I just dump them on a page. So this one was for Everyday Explorers and it had a new like frame stamp set so I used it to make an everyday page. I believe this is for July but I just include all the different photos that I could of the month to kind of get an overview sense of what happened during the month. 
This one was for Ellie's studio and I made my own grid in Photoshop Elements because I really wanted to add in a ton of different photos about October and I added in all kinds of stamping, filled in this card and this card as well and just had a lot of fun creating this festive page for October. This one was in 2021 and I used Kelly Stamps digital stamps to document January and I made journaling cards, filler cards, and then added little, um, what do you call these, <laughs> word phrases on the side here and also tried out some stamps on the edge. So really love the color scheme for January and it just turned out great. Here's an overview of September and I used very large photos. I believe these are like three inches. And again, just touching on a variety of different topics like baking, treats, um, clouds, which I love clouds, making stuff, making. And then I also used Everyday Explorer stamps for the currently. And then I made a cluster of stamping here and along here. So that way I have that nice triangle to uh, get your eye to travel. And then down here, bullet point list of, you know, everything that I was talking about in the spread. And then here's another similar one for a grid page. I kind of spread things out more. I don't think that this is quite three by three, but it might be. But I just did currently again and lifted it up. I think these all lift so that way you can see, well, not that one, that one doesn't lift, but I did torn uh, edges as well. And this kind of covered what was going on during the month of Christmas. Here's a really big overview. I'll need to adjust the camera. This is from my eight and a half by 11 album. And again, using Kelly Stamps, that was the name of her company. Her name is Kelly Winnell, and she did a ton of digital stamps. So instead of physical stamps, it's digital stamps. And I just used all of those to document my February. Another month in here that I kind of did an overview doing pocket pages. Uh, you know, I consider pocket pages a grid. I don't know, but I just love how this one came out as well. She put out some pocket cards, so I used that color scheme to work everything in together for this pocket page. This one kind of was not only the opening for July, but it was also an everyday type of page. And I documented what went on during this day using bright pinks and bright yellows and just carried it on the front and also the back. So lots of fun to make this. And I, I think this was day in the life. So that was something fun to do something a little different. This was a fun summer page using Ellie's studio pieces and I even did a little like insert here but this is the page playing off of this color scheme and again selfies of me my my I think one of my kids probably put on a unicorn headband of me a book club I was a part of at the time decorations a Instagram image a shadow picture and then over here some more uh, photos for the month. This is definitely a grid type of page for capturing the everyday, um, making these flower clusters based off of the color scheme that was in here, but I think it was off of here and here. So I kind of, I definitely pulled it from my photos and I got a really unique, beautiful color scheme. I love the flowers on the side and then popping this digital stamp piece here and just adding in a mix of photos to document August. Here's another really fun example of a grid for the everyday and I definitely pulled out photos that were pink and purple and then changed ones to black and white so that way I could continue my theme and I went all out obviously with the pinks and really love how this one turned out and again you can see I just did bullet point lists there and a cluster here and it's just a really pretty pretty layout that I came up with to document February. And lastly, another fall, October uh, monthly page. And again, 
just making my own grid in Photoshop elements. This probably is close to two by two and three by two, which I think I've mentioned before is definitely my go-to size. So I'll start out with that size and then I will adjust it down, you know, in Photoshop elements to get it the size I want. Cause I definitely like a little bit of border here. And again, you can see here, this is another Snapchat filter photo. So just, it was festive for the season. So I added it in there lots of great photos for October. So those are just a few examples for using a grid to document everyday life. We're gonna move on to friends and family. The next section is gonna be friends and family. And I already kind of showed you this project right here when I was talking about end pages, but this is uh, my bestie and I, and one of the things that we've loved to do over the years is use Snapchat to take the most ridiculous photos or videos if it like changes our voice. So I took the uh, journaling cards from, I think it was in a creative bubble and used them here and here and just played off of those colors. And so I made most of these uh, black and white and then used tons of Kelly stamps, stamps to fill in the various pockets. So it turned out to be a really fun, colorful, happy page. Here's a fun page that I don't do as often anymore, but I used to take, you know, photos of my kids and I throughout the month and compile them into like a monthly spread. So this is one of those pages. It's all about June. And so just included several different photos of them and then a list of what was going on for us during the month. So very cute and playful and I, just love capturing our photos and you know as they get older they don't necessarily want their photos taken and that's okay another one with my bestie this time i was using some everyday explorer stamps and also studio calico papers but i wanted to kind of do the really summery vibe so i took um some sort of leaf shape or maybe i made it i don't know but i stamped a bunch of phrases on here and you can see them i'll bring it a little closer so you can see but that's how i use the stamps and then it just turned out so so fun to document this little outing we had to have dinner together Here's one with my mom. We love to take we love taking selfies whenever we get together. So we had this one and I used Citrus Twist to document it with all the beautiful florals. Another one with my kids this time in fall and I used a Tracy Reed kit and I have a little four by six right here, more shadow pictures and then you flip it and I have one with my daughter and one with my son. So overall a pretty simple page, but it documents the fun time that we had at the pumpkin patch. Another mom and kids project, this one all the way from 2017. So my kids are super little, but I took some small photos here and used a digital kit to talk about what was going on with my kids and also just make this a really bright and colorful page. This is another fun one when my kids and me went to visit my bestie and they loved going to visit uncle's house. I got a photo of all of us plus our shadows and then I have a ton of the Snapchat photo or Snapchat pictures so I included those as well and played off of the greens and yellows so 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 much fun and again you know you don't have to look your best when you're doing Snapchat pictures because they have those ridiculous filters like I said when you're talking about friends and family, obviously you can include your partner, husband, and uh, for me, this was right after a dental surgery. So going out to dinner and having like a real meal was really amazing. So I had to make a special layout and I carried the florals all the way across and then did a flip up. So that way I could include both of our photos and talk about my first big meal. And here's a fun one that I did for December Daily Product Play where I used the stencils to make some jelly plate prints 
and then I took those and combined them with the transparency tags to make a pocket page all about the people in my life. So I have my family, I have my um, mom friend, and then I have my bestie, and it turned out to be such a festive, special page. One other example to document is any special occasions with your partner. And for me, this is our anniversary in February. We love hiking. So I did a big old spread for hiking here and even did a big collage here. I'm pretty sure I used a pick frame to make this collage and then print it out. And on the back, I continued it because we went out to lunch and I just changed our photos to black and white so I could use this paper and really pull out the blues and teals from the different uh, products that I was using. I believe it's the awesome digital story kit from Ally Edwards. So love how that one turned out. Here's another one with my mom. And this particular time we got to go to a special town to kind of celebrate fall a little bit. Um, it wasn't quite fall yet. It was still like the middle of August, but we had a wonderful time. And I got a bunch of photos and used a Mandy Ford kit to document this day. And then one last example is with my dear friend, Erica. We got to meet each other last year when we both met in Oregon and we had been friends on Instagram for a really long time. So I wanted to document the story of that and also a photo. And then I could add in some more of our actual trip. I just haven't done that yet. And then we did see each other again in May. So I have lots of documenting from our trip in May. I actually flew up to Washington to see Erica and spend a couple days together, which was amazing. Okay, so that is a quick section on friends and family. It's always so fun to document your relationships with your friends and also family. And you could even do you and your children as well, or you could do your furry kids. The next section we're gonna do for this video is selfies. And I'm gonna try not to make it a super long section because selfies can get to be a huge, huge section. But I'm gonna grab some examples and then we're gonna go through them. So the last section for this video is gonna be all about selfies, which is ideas 40 through 44. But like I mentioned, you know, selfies cover such a huge range. I mean, this whole album is about you, right? So documenting yourself is important, but selfies are as well, embracing your selfie. So this particular layout here I did, I used the, I think it was the black and white story kit or the quarterly kit, something with just black and white. And I used this large photo of me and talked about self care and what it means to me at this point when I was just about two years into my movement journey. So that is one way to document yourself is using a selfie and then talking about what self-care means to you. It could be working out, it could be reading, it could be a whole lot of things. I love getting my hair done a few times a year and I had gotten my hair done in November and I always love to take selfies afterwards because my hair is so fancy. So I took some photos and since this was in November, I was able to use a Mandy Ford printable collection and it's just a gorgeous color scheme and I love how this turned out. At the end of this album for, I believe it was 2021, yeah, the end of 2021, I decided to do a grid for all the months. Everyday Explorers had just come out with a monthly stamp set. So I used that to document each of the months. And I think I meant to go back and maybe do some journaling, but I never did. And then since we weren't done with December, I did not put a December photo here, but I could always go back and fix that. But I love how this one turned out with photos throughout the year. This was a really fun one to make. Tracy Reed had just done a kit for 2021 and talking about a fresh start. And so I just talked about how I'm glad that 2020 was over 
and how that was really hard. And then I gathered up some various photos to make some film strips from various photos from 2020. So that way I could, you know, talk about how hard of a, a year it was and then put them in a glassine pocket. So love how that one turned out. It's definitely a technique I do every so often. So it's really fun. And here's another silly one I do occasionally. Sometimes I will just uh, shake out my hair and dance and then I will try to get a selfie and then just add a filter to it to make it look a little, I don't know what the word is, stylish. But for this one, I was going for purple. And so I added in a bunch of purple to accentuate that. This one is from 2017, I believe. Yes, no, 2018. And I took a large photo of me and then the empty white space right here. I just did a bullet point list of everything like I could think of about myself and included two other selfies. Overall, a beautiful layout to kind of document myself at that moment in March with uh, all the different flowers. And I just, it's so pretty. Here's a festive one for autumn. I just did a bunch of squares and then a photo of me out on the porch and used a ton of different die cuts to emphasize the theme of fall. And then as you can see, a lot of my album, I take selfies and even if it takes me 40 selfies, I'll get one eventually. This one, I had originally done like a four by eight size with citrus twist page protectors, but then decided to move them to uh, this half binder size. I had a four by eight here and then another one and then just taking ridiculous selfies, hoping something turns out. And then this one, my husband actually took um, it's out in nature, messing with some mixed media right there, trying out pattern paper or pattern stamping, trying to make my own pattern. This one you saw for collage, you know, making collages. This one over here was kind of how I kicked off the month of September. I had a selfie here, another ridiculous selfie with moving hair. And then I did a floating pocket and some ING phrases as well. This one covers not only, you know, taking selfies, but also covers uh, self-care as well because I'm going on a cycling ride. And for this photo, I just kind of like held it out down in front of me and hoped I didn't crash. And this one, I would just hold up the number of miles. And I'm assuming that when I came home, my husband took my photo, but that's a great topic to do is again, self-care. Over here, you can see I started a page. I don't remember what it was. Maybe something to do with September, something with everyday September. And you can see I had a Snapchat filter here and here, and I was just gonna use those in the page and pair it with that quote right here. I have a September, I believe this would be the end page. So lots of digital work here. These two things were probably saved from Instagram stories, which is actually another great way to have like instant stories to document. So I still save things from Instagram stories and now I can use them in my journal and then maybe later on in a scrapbook page when I get to it. So very easy page, right th page idea right there. And you don't always have to use a photo if you don't want to. Over here, you can see there's more selfies here. This I believe was a day in the life. And so I just included some favorite photos throughout the day so I could have that story in my own personal album. Another cycling one and another Kelly Stamps one using those digital stamps. She did one, I think it, it was all about exercising. So I made a card here and here and here. So all the cards, I made them and I just documented being on a bike ride. Lots of photos of myself, a shadow, and then a picture of the trail. And it turned out so good, I love it. Another thing I could have added to my list of ideas is obviously uh, being creative. I think I talked a little bit about hobbies in self-care, but that's not something I really specifically included, which is kind of funny. I don't know why I did that, but I definitely enjoy documenting what I'm making in my pages. You can see here, this is for February. 
this was probably a Snapchat, so I included that. Same thing with here. And I just find ways of incorporating what I'm making and what I'm working on throughout my albums in the different months. You can see here, I used a selfie as my main photo for this everyday page, but that's pretty much the only selfie. I then have quotes or screenshots that I took from Instagram, um, an Instagram story that, you know, I was excited that Allie Edwards Design Inc. had reposted my project, my account, what I was eating for lunch, plants, and um, my little porch. So really easy to get photos if you kind of think outside the box as far as, you know, having to get a selfie. Here's another one for making. I don't know what in the world I was doing, but I can tell you I was probably having fun with all of my stamps. So I made a very stampy background and then added in this acrylic about my creative space. These are not selfies because my husband took them, but I added them in and made it a very uh, summery page. This one I just found somewhere in my backyard to prop up my camera. I think I had my tripod. Let me grab that. This is my tripod. It actually, I just broke it because there's supposed to be a clip right here to hold your phone, but I've had this thing for over 10 years. So it is amazing and I absolutely love it. Uh, I will try to leave it in the description box, but it is fantastic. I have no idea how I broke it. Apparently I'm stronger than I think, but I propped up my uh, camera in the backyard and I just took some photos because I was feeling fancy in my outfit and feeling good and I liked my hair. So I decided to just take some photos and well, actually not some photos, probably 50 photos. And then I could pick out a few that I like and document them with this Tracy Reed kit and some Scrap and Happy Studio flares there. And so of course you can just see me throughout the album. There's a friend page, but it's also seasons and that's a selfie. And again, I'm talking about, you know, changing this with the seasons and summer and it just added in this free TikTok tic-tac-toe page from Allie Edwards. Another film strip page with Week in the Life this time and just including some photos of Week in the Life from my perspective. I mean, most of it is from my perspective because I'm the, I'm the main character as Allie Edwards says, but um, these are my favorites. This one was a really fun selfie to try to capture. I couldn't figure out how to get the phone farther further away from me, farther. I wanted the phone to not be so close to me. So what I did is I took a video and once I was done with the video, I took a screenshot and then I was able to edit that screenshot and print it out and use it as an opening page for July. So this was kind of a bummer page right here about getting my dental surgery. Definitely not fun at all. And I had a flip up to uh, add some more journaling. This one was really pretty with uh, Corky Heart Designs products, her printables, um, but that one was really fun. Same thing with this one. I was wearing a hat while we were coming back from a trip and just being silly and used a Carrie Bradford stamp set to make the pattern there and then all these cardstock circles. Here's another way to include your selfies. Love mind maps. I think that's the correct term, but I used a grid here. There's two selfies here. This one was obviously on a timer. Same thing with this one, but I love to read when I have my breakfast. So that is there as well. A hiking photo, a decoration, a project. So lots of different ways that you can, you know, tell your stories and get some photos of yourself. This one was also on a timer. I took a photo of me while I was creating during December daily. I took several photos, so I included my three favorites to do a make page, and it's probably one of my favorites. Here's a more recent one about my birthday in 2023 using the birthday story kit. So I have a photo of me here, and then a large photo there as well. And I think there's a flip up. And I know that it sometimes might be a pain to like have these flip ups and have to pull out the page. But for me, it's more important to have these in a protector protected 
and you know having the slight inconvenience of pulling that out i'd rather them be protected so that is the that that outweighs everything for me having these in a page protector if that makes sense I followed up this page with just a simple grid of all the different uh, pieces of my birthday. So a lot of fun to include my birthday with this new Ali Edwards kit. Well, newer kit. Here's a really fun one that I kind of went really messy and more cluttered. I don't know, cluttered, is that the word? But I used uh, Michelle Corky Heart Designs pieces with stamping and clear stickers and her printables. This one, I just took our swim bag and set it a little further away from me so I could capture me reading at the pool because that's something I love to do. I'll swim with the kids for a little bit and then I'll go back and sit on the towel and get some more reading time in. Here's a really special one where I went to my job interview and I took a picture of my outfit and then decided to pair it with the, I think it's the begin story kit. And I scrap lifted a friend in the community as part of my scrapbooking with friends series. So really a special, special layout. And then a few layouts past that, I documented, you know, what was happening during the beginning of August and how I was getting ready to meet my friend Erica. And I was waiting for the phone call about, you know, how the interview went. Here's another one from 2017 documenting June. And I had this beautiful sunset picture and then a pull one with me in a skirt, Snapchat. So I just pulled those together uh, to create a really fun, unique color scheme with the pinks and dark blues and then the teal. And I just, I love it. So it's just a bunch of photos with me with friends and then myself, my husband took a photo from where I stand, which is something I love to do. Just look down at your feet, snap a photo, and then you instantly have something that you could document, just your feet. Speaking of just your feet, you could do, you know, this is kind of the along the lines of from from where I stand. This is actually a project you guys are going to see come together on Saturday for Allie Edwards stash projects. I think it'll be video number four or something like that. But this one, I had my feet up in the air. It was a change in, you know, seasons, a change in seasons of life. And so I just wanted to talk about it. Um, talk about what I had written on Instagram. I used that and then just this really blurry shot of me outside in the backyard. Okay, so that about covers selfies. I know that was another long section, but selfies with your outfits. I've done that before where I snap a photo of my outfit in front of my mirror. Most of the time my mirror is not clean, so that makes it tricky. Selfies using filters like Snapchat just to make it easy and then selfies using a photo to document a currently list, selfies from where I stand perspective. So lots of different options when it comes to how you're gonna document your selfie. Okay, you guys, that was another longer edition of part three for the All About Me ideas. I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this video and next week will be the last video in the series it's probably going to be another longer video since it has all things about travel and home and also holidays so hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day bye